love Tanzanian uh, music. If you just go right now on Google and search top trending music in Kenya in the charts, out of the top 10, seven will be Tanzanian musicians. And even the other three will be gospel musicians from Kenya. So this has been a very uh, interesting conversation, mostly online. And one of the things that I found out was a lot of people were trying to equate the success of Tanzanian musicians, Rayvanny, Mboso, Zuchu, Diamond, to how cheap data bundles are in TZ. And uh, in, in, in reverse, Kenya's data bundles are very expensive in comparison to TZ. That's why our musicians are doing great on uh, YouTube. So I decided to take up on this challenge and try to prove whether this actually is true or not. So uh, I decided, first thing is to look at the cost of one GB for uh, majority of the countries in uh, Africa. So this is whether it's data bundle, whether it's from your fiber optic, uh, whatever you get from Wi-Fi, etc. What's the average cost for one GB? And then also I sampled the top five musicians from those specific African countries and I ensured that I had musicians from West Africa, North Africa, Central, East and Southern uh, Africa. Then for all those top five musicians, I summed up uh, the total views they have on their YouTube channel. And what I do, then I did some magic. So, what did I find out? If you have the cost of one data, uh, cost of one data bundle on your X axis, and the cumulative views on your Y axis, you actually have a negative correlation. What does that mean? It means countries where data bundles are cheaper, you actually tend to have a lot of views. And when uh, countries where data bundles are more expensive, like Angola and South Africa, then uh, the views are quite much, much more uh, less. So then I sat down and was like, okay, then it means that anecdotal evidence from Twitter actually makes sense. And is actually convinced that actually uh, a way of promoting more people to watch YouTube videos, especially music, is making data bundles cheaper. This was until a guy called Kevin Minan. He, he is, I think he still is, the YouTube music trends manager. He he's decided to have a project where he looked at popular African uh, musician and he used YouTube data uh, to break down uh, the, the characteristics, viewership of, of this uh, popular musicians. And there's one very interesting thing he found, which was that any African musician who has more than a million subscribers uh, like Wizkid, Davido, Yemi, Alade, majority of their views come outside uh, their country. And it gets even crazier. Top musicians like Banner Boy and Davido, 95% of their YouTube views come outside of Nigeria. And I was like, okay, how about we go down to the Tanzanian case? So uh, one of the things uh, uh, they found out for the top Tanzanian musicians, Diamond, um, Boso, Zushu, Rayvanny, 80% of their views are outside Tanzania. And guess who's driving the views in TZ? Kenya. Kenya accounts for 40% of the views of Tanzanian, top Tanzanian musicians. Then I had to think like, okay, let's go back to the analysis I did. If Tanzanians' data bundles was actually cheaper than Kenya's, the Tanzanians should generate more of the, of the traffic to the top musicians there. But our data bundles are expensive, but we still use our expensive bundles to view Tanzanian musicians. And then I was like, okay, this has been completely been debunked. The cost of data bundles has nothing to do with how, how much people view music. And going back by the analysis done by, by Kevin, it's sort of like a hierarchy. Our Kenyan music tends to have a local appeal. So even if we like our musicians so much, they can only garner most of the views from Kenya. Then, if you look at uh, Tanzanian musicians, they tend to have a regional appeal. So, across East Africa and perhaps Africa, then they have a little bit more views. And then if you have Davido, Banner Boy, uh, so and so forth, they have a global appeal. So they'll be drawing in views from all over uh, the world. And then at that point, the, the, the views in the country gets outdone by the global views. So no matter how, data bundles are cheap in Nigeria. They'll never be driving the views if that's a global artist or the music has a global appeal.
So this is a classical thing where in data you say that correlation is not causation, which means if you see a pattern, does it mean that A actually causes B? And I was terribly fooled by the uh, correlation. Then what drives music? What really makes people want to listen to music? That's a, it's a much more deeper uh, research, much more deeper analysis. It could be the sound. Uh, it could be there's more musicality in the Tanzanian music than the Kenyan music. That's why uh, we prefer to listen to the, the music. And I remember someone was joking that even Kenyan artists who want to be popular, like Nadia Mukami, they'll want to sound Tanzanian because that's the sound Kenyans are getting uh, used to and they're getting to, uh, to like. So even if we zero-rated bundles and remove all the taxes and make it very cheaper, still our musicians won't be able to compete with Tanzanian musicians and perhaps Nigerian musicians. So this needs us to fall back. Why don't we have global superstars? Uh, the best we have is Soti Soul, uh, which is more of a, like a regional success in this. We need to go back to your music. Why do people love music? Why do people love Bonaboy? Why do people love Davido? Why are they still there for 10, 20 years? That's a question for everyone. So until next time, remember that if your mother's food tastes very well, don't think that it tastes very well across the world.